Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the second chapter of Luke's gospel. Hear these words beginning with the 22nd verse. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they, Mary and Joseph, brought him, Jesus, up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, Now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Friends, please join me in a spirit of prayer. Our gracious sovereign and our God, assist me to proclaim, to spread to all the world abroad the honors and glories of thy name. Amen. Who are you looking for? What are you hoping to find? What Jesus are you hoping will be revealed this Christmas season? Do you even know what you're seeking? I think those earliest kind of, if we can call them Christians, knew what they were seeking. This story of Simeon and Anna are just amazing. These two people who are there in the presence of the temple but knew there was something else they were expecting. In fact, in the whole Gospel of Luke, the story we have is of people expecting something, that this one who is to come, who is the Messiah, is a kind of difference maker in their lives, that something has happened that God is doing that is changing the world. So I wonder, who are you looking for this Christmas? 
Are you looking for someone to change your life? Are you looking for a different path? Are you hoping for a different pattern? Are you just kind of going through the motions of doing what you've always done? Because our story seems to start there, right? We're told that the Holy Family goes into the temple to present the child and the tradition that they knew to be in accordance with the law, yes, but also the way things had been done in that family for generations. They were going through the motions. They were leaning on their ancestry. They were doing what their family had taught them to do. What we don't hear is them talking about the angels. We don't hear them talking about the shepherds who have shown up in Luke. We don't hear them celebrating the story that indeed this one they hold and they go in the temple to present is the Lord. And it makes me wonder, friends, have they forgotten already? Like, have they missed it? But here they go to the Lord to present and offer up the baby Jesus so that Jesus can be presented. And we're told that as that's occurring, this old man who had had the Spirit kind of witness to him, we're told his name is Simeon. He gets a nudging, and suddenly he kind of rushes to the temple, and I wonder what he left behind. I mean, like, what kind of daily tasks did he have going on? I mean, it's not Christmas Day anymore. He's in his busyness, as anybody would have been in the town, but somehow the Spirit prompts him that something is happening in the temple, and he had been told by the Spirit, I mean, what a cool thing, right? You will see the Lord before you die. I mean, whoa. How many people in all of human history got that opportunity? And so he went, not having known anything other than the Spirit moving in his life, and there he goes, and sure enough, upon seeing a family who were strangers to him present a baby, behold, my eyes have seen the Lord, but let me let you know something. This is not just any child. This child will have a sword that will pierce your soul and reveal your inner thoughts. Oh, my. Like, I hope none of your children do that, right? Don't worry, they will, right? Every child will reveal for you all the things you're amazing at and all the things you're not. My advice to you is love them anyway, okay? Because they're going to love you, but just you got to learn how to do that. But I mean, he could have said that about any child, but there was something deeper he was telling them about who this is. And think about that. After seeing that one baby, he died happy and fulfilled. Anyone who's held up close a baby knows the joy and the hope, the expectation of what might be the vulnerability of who we are as humans. But he also knew something even more, that into this world of frailty and challenge and decay and suffering, into a world that oftentimes feels full of heartache and lament, a child was being born that would change everything. And so again, what do I, I ask, like, what are you looking for this Christmas? Are you expecting to meet this child who changes everything? Are you expecting to encounter this one who can transform your heart and by transforming your heart somehow change the world? And the text continues, and there is Anna. Now, Anna's a little different, and I don't know how far the cameras can follow me over, but like if you come all the way over here, I mean, she would have been like hiding out in the transepts or around the edge of the church, like some of the people who live and shelter in places 
that the temple would provide, like Psalm 84 says, even the birds of the air find a place to nest in the columns of the temple of the Lord. That somehow she was out on the periphery, a person off the street, a person without means, no status, no power. And there she was kind of in the side columns of the temple in the outermost place. Remember, as a woman, at that time, she wasn't even allowed into the holiest of holies or the places where the altar was. But she found safety there and a place to be. And she sees what's going on and recognizes this child and has revealed to her who he is. And she, like Simeon, recognizes that indeed she has met the Lord. Who have you met? Who have you met? And has it made a difference? Because no matter who you're looking for this Christmas season, no matter what you think you need or are trying to find, the good news of the gospel is that for all eternity, Jesus has been looking for you. Jesus has been trying to find you, to meet you, to have you just open a little bit of your heart to the possibilities of how God might make a difference in your life and how because of who Jesus is, everything in the world might be different. This morning, like many of you, I woke up to the news that Desmond Tutu had passed. Um, How many of y'all have heard of Desmond Tutu? Anybody? right, an Anglican bishop who worked to end apartheid in South Africa, did amazing humanitarian aid throughout the world. He received a a Nobel Peace Prize back in 1984, and at his speech, and again, there are so many quotes, so if you love him and you have all his quotes, I'm sorry, it's just, this is one of my favorite. He talked about how, how when there is no justice, peace becomes a casualty that when there is no justice, it's hard for peace to emerge. But he also spent his whole life teaching about the grace that God offers us and how reconciliation was possible. He, He said, none of us chose what we found ourselves living in, but all of us have a choice about how we let grace and reconciliation shape who we've become. What will we become? I think fundamentally he understood what he was looking for, to find in this child hope for all people, the blessing of what might be when we just open our heart a little bit or take the tradition we've inherited and the blessing of the baptisms of our family and those we loved and somehow allow them to become made real in us through the presence of Jesus, we might go to the world to make a difference. Like Simeon, here's a person who everybody would have known, and God got hold of him and made a profound difference. Now, how many of you have ever heard of Gene Barnhart? Anybody? Right? Yeah. Laura has. She was a friend of ours in the first church I served in Nacogdoches. Most of us have never heard of her. She had an amazing life. Um, She was in the OSS, the forerunner of the CIA. She was in Hungary when all that went down back in the 50s, okay? an amazing story. She got her PhD even though she came from a mountain in Arkansas out of great poverty, and she dedicated her life to eventually helping kids. She always wanted, she told me, she always wanted to work with the children who were, quote, behavior problems so the other teachers could teach and she could help. She was a forerunner for what would become modern special ed. Uh, in the States as it became more prevalent. And she made a profound difference 
in life after life after life. In fact, as she got a little bit older, as she was still serving and working in the school district, um, they had called her to a situation where she was helping someone kind of de-escalate things, and he was mad, and he kind of swung a door and hit her in the head, and she had to be hospitalized for several weeks and had a long road to recovery. But she never gave up on that young man. And she went back to work with him. And he would later graduate from college because she forgave and was reconciled and wouldn't give up. She was a person like Anna that none of us had ever heard of, but because she looked for Jesus and what was possible in that baby, her faith compelled her to be and do things that changed the world. Again, who are you hoping to find in the baby Jesus? Be ready. If you open your heart just a little bit, that baby child will change everything. He will literally pierce your soul, reveal your inner thoughts, push you into a world where you'll be and do abundantly more than what you imagined. But, oh, friends, not only since the beginning of the time has God been looking for you, God will meet any faithfulness and response you make with a blessing beyond anything you can imagine. God will allow you to participate in the redemption of the world by some actions that are known and celebrated and others that no one ever hears about. God will be with you every step of the way in reconciliation, hope, and grace. Allow God to meet you this Christmas season and you'll become a difference maker because of the difference Jesus has made for you. Amen.